Throughout this unit, we will learn about the great classic civilizations of the Eastern Hemisphere. How did they rise? How did they fall? The word civilization comes from the Latin term civitas, or city. While civilization is commonly used to describe a society with advanced levels of organization and technology, as opposed to less advanced societies, this definition can be problematic. If we do not understand the complexities of history, we might think that the road to civilization was a linear process that began with hunting-gathering and ended with complex cities, and if certain societies did not develop in this same way, then they were not civilized. It is important to realize that different peoples throughout history were shaped by different and unique circumstances. Also, most scholars today acknowledge many causes and explanations for how and why civilizations developed and what constitutes a civilization. Let's read about some characteristics of ancient classic civilizations. Cities. As farmers settled in fertile river valleys, they began to grow surplus or extra food. This extra food increased the population of the settlements. In time, the settlements grew into cities such as Ur and Sumer or Babylon in Mesopotamia. Organized central governments. As cities developed and expanded, the food supply and irrigation systems needed to be managed and maintained. Governments, such as councils or religious leaders, began to oversee the business and existence of the cities. Complex religions. Religious leaders conducted elaborate ceremonies to appease the gods, polytheism, and ensure a bountiful harvest. Floods and droughts were blamed on the gods' anger, so rituals were conducted in the temples in an attempt to keep the gods happy. Job specialization. As societies became more complex, artisans and craftsmen were needed to make specific items and or perform special tasks. This meant that people concentrated on knowing how to do one thing well, such as teaching, scribing, stone cutting, and so forth. Social classes. As jobs became specialized, the status of certain individuals was elevated. If the job was deemed essential to the people, it had a higher status. A knowledgeable and educated religious leader, for example, was more respected than an unskilled worker. Herders were needed and respected for the food they provided, while masons were needed for building. A slave was on the lowest rung of the social ladder, while warriors and kings were at the top. Writing. Writing skills were needed to record traded goods and stores of food because the information became too great to remember. In addition, writing became necessary in order to express ideas that were too complex for pictures or spoken words. Art and Architecture. Art and architecture often express the beliefs and values of a civilization. Different styles were developed and copied by societies over the years. The most important structures were often the most elaborate and built of lasting materials. Public Works The government was responsible for projects that were a benefit to all of the people, such as defensive walls to protect from attack, canals to irrigate the fields, sewers and water systems to ensure the health and well-being and survival of its people. Before we take a look at what some of these characteristics look like within the classic civilizations of ancient China, Greece, and Rome, let's take a look at the timelines. Think about measuring time. We use the acronyms BCE and CE when referring to time in history. BCE refers to the time before the Common Era, or before the year one. On a timeline, this is measured backwards, much like negative numbers on a number line. CE refers to the Common Era, or after the year one. There is no year zero. You will have the opportunity to organize events in history within a timeline. When you do this, keep in mind the dates from before the Common Era and during the Common Era. For example, your timeline event cards can tell you that Emperor Xing Shi Di became emperor in 221 before the Common Era. He linked defensive walls, which became the Great Wall of China, in 214 BCE, then ordered the burning of scholarly knowledge in 213 BCE. Clearly, there were many events in China before the year 1. But we can note that in 105 of the Common Era, papermaking was invented, 
although some think there is evidence that paper had been invented at some point before this. As you organize your own timeline event cards, keep the dates in mind and how they are related to each other across civilizations. For example, you might notice that it wasn't until the years 102 to 130 CE that the Roman frontier, Hadrian's Wall, was built in the United Kingdom by the Roman army. Consider how you might compare the similar achievement of the Chinese to this wall. You may want to categorize your timeline event cards by similar topics that you can compare. Cities, organized central government, job specialization, or public works. After analyzing the various events across different civilizations, consider three things that you have learned about the Golden Age civilizations two interesting facts about the use of timelines, and one question you still have about Golden Age civilizations.